All right, welcome back everybody. This is part two, reporting it on the same day. We went through uh, and just went through chapters 30 to 33. And in those chapters, we got a breakdown. The Israelites have now moved to a place um, right outside the Jordan, right up along the side of the Jordan. God has commanded them to take out the Canaanites. And he said, if you don't take out the Canaanites, you yourselves will die. But if you leave anybody and you were to live in that city in the land of Canaan, then their bad behaviors would infect you. And therefore, we've done this all for nothing. So that is where we pick up on chapter 34. And we continue. Here we go. Chapter 34. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel and say to them, When ye come into the land of Canaan, uh, there's a note, this is the land that shall fall unto, unto you for an inheritance, even the land of Canaan with the coasts thereof. Then your south quarter shall be from the wilderness of Zin. So now what we're doing is we're going to show you Canaan's borders. This is where we're going to take a look at the uh, Canaan's borders so that we can probably go once again, go to a map and say, okay, this is what that city is. Okay, so it's going to be very, very easy. And just a little bit of a fun fact about Canaan. Uh, the name of the city now, I'm not exactly sure. But it is, uh, from my research, it tells me it's on the west bank of Gaza. Or west bank of the Gaza Strip. So, quite literally, not just Israel, but even the original place where the Canaanites were and Israel took over it's under attack so uh, we know the Gaza Strip is in the news right now so uh, I'm not trying to make any references very specific but I know that the land of Canaan and I don't know the name of the city now all I'm referencing is the fact that it is at the west bank of the Gaza Strip oh sorry I got a little sticker out of my glasses there Nobody told me. Okay, there we go. Now I've got to clean my fingerprints off of the glass because I can't see. I can't see the words. All right. So, here we go. We can continue. Oh, look at that. I can see. Okay. And your south quarter shall be from the wilderness of Zin all along the coast of Edom. And your south quarter shall be the utmost coast of the Salt Sea eastward. Your border shall turn from the south to the accent of Akrab Akrabim and pass on to Zin and the ongoing for forth thereof shall be from the south of Kadesh Barnea and shall go on unto the Hazar Adar and pass on unto Asmon and the border shall fetch a compass from Asnon unto the river of Egypt and the goings out of it shall be at the sea. And as for the western border ye shall even have the great sea for a border. This shall be your west border, and this shall be your north border. From the east sea ye shall point out from Mount Or. From Mount Or ye shall point out your border unto the entrance of Hamath, and the goings force of the border shall be Zedad. Zedad. And the border shall go on to Ziphon, and goings out of it shall be Hazam Enor, and this shall be north of a border. And ye shall point out your east border from Hazar Enon to Stephon. And the coast shall go down from Stephon to Ribla, on the coast east side of Ain, and the border shall descend, and each and shall reach unto the side of the sea of Chinareth eastward, and the border shall go down to the Jordan, and the goings out of it shall be at the Salt Sea. This shall be your land, with the coasts thereof round about. What I'll do, if I'm thinking about it, if I can remember to do so, I will put a map uh you can be able to compare them from the old canaan and its borders to where it's at now by comparison and moses commanded the children of israel saying this is the land which ye shall inherit by law which the lord commanded you to give unto the nine tribes and to the half tribe for the tribe of the children of reuben according to the house and their fathers and the tribe of the children of gad 
according to the house and their fathers, have received their inheritance. And half the tribe of Manasseh have received their inheritance. And two tribes and the half. So what he's saying is, is nine only of you, nine of the tribes get here. Because two of them have already gotten their inheritance from God. Uh, he speaks of chapter 14, where he, or verse 14, he says, For the tribe of the children of Reuben, according to the house of of their fathers and the tribe of the children of Gad, according to the house of the fathers, have received their inheritance, and half the tribe of Manasseh, Manasseh have received their inheritance. So the tribe of Manasseh or Joseph. Remember, Manas, Man, Manasseh is Joseph's son. The two tribes and the half tribe have received their inheritance unto this this side Jordan near Jericho, eastward toward the sunrise. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, These are the names of the men which shall divide the land unto you. Okay, so these are all the people that are going to divide the land, since the other two already have it, right? So here we go. Eleazar the priest, and Joshua the son of Nun. So Joshua is the son of Eleazar. And he shall take one prince of every tribe to divide the land by inheritance. So what he's basically saying is one person from each tribe He's going to be the prince of the land is going to inherit their portion of the land. And the names of the men of these are the tribe of Judah, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the tribe of. So he's right now. Now he's being very specific as to who is going to be the prince and get these lands in there. Basically, it's like putting out a contract and putting them in their names. These people are the new owners Shemuel of the tribe of Benjamin, Eladad, the tribe of Dan, Buki, uh, the prince of the children of Joseph, for the tribe of the children of Manasseh, Haniel, the son of Ephod, the prince of the tribe of the children of Zebulun, will be Elizaphon, the prince of the tribe of Ish. Issachar is Paltiel. Uh, the prince of the tribe of Asher is Ahid, Ahi, ah, Ahihud. <laughs> I'm sorry, these are some of the oddest. I shouldn't say they're odd. They're just, I'm not used to these. Uh, the prince of the tribe of Naphtali is Pedahel. P Pedahel. And they, these are they whom the Lord commanded to divide the inheritance unto the children of Israel. In the land of Canaan. So those are the people getting. Okay. Okay. Now what we have left is. What about the Levites? All right. Levites need something. They've been. They've been. Uh, the Levites have been taking care of the tabernacle this whole time. Do they get something? Because if you recognize. They weren't. Re they weren't mentioned. In those tribes. Okay. So let's find out what's going on here. Uh, chapter 35, And the Lord spake unto Moses in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jer Jericho, which is still where they're at. Command the children of Israel that they give up unto the Levites oh, inheritance of their possession cities to dwell in, and ye shall give also unto the Levites suburbs for the cities around them. Now I want to mention this, and I want to kind of give you a food for thought here. Why is it that he's saying you must go and give the Levites. Well, I'm not absolutely positive on this one, but from what I recall, the Levites, their responsibility was taking care of the tabernacle, as I heard already mentioned. I don't recall any time that they were able to send out people to go to war. So when they were, when everybody else was going to the war, they were um, as far as I am understanding is they were protecting the tabernacle and that was their responsibility to set up around the tabernacle and protect it. So because they were doing that, somebody else has to give up some land for them. And all the cities shall they have to dwell in and the suburbs of them shall be the cattle and their goods and for all their beasts and the suburbs of the cities, which he shall, oh, what is that? Pardon me. I get a, I smell smoke outside. I got to pause and close the door. My apologies, I had my door open and the neighbors, I'm on the second floor and right down below me is my garage and they will go underneath 
and they smoke and it wafts up into the apartment. It stinks so horribly. And you shall measure from without the city on the east side 2,000 cubits, and on the south side 2,000 cubits, and on the west side 2,000, and on the north side 2,000 cubits, and the city shall be in the midst. This shall be to them the suburbs of the city. So that's where the Levites, they get that. Uh, and among the cities which y'all give unto the Levites, there shall be six cities for refuge, which ye shall appoint from the manslayer, that he may flee thither and go to them, y'all add forty and two cities. So all the cities which ye shall give to the Levites shall be forty and eight cities. Them shall ye give them their suburbs, and the cities which ye shall give them shall be of the possession of the children of Israel. For them that have many, ye shall give many, but them that have few, ye shall give few. Everyone shall give of his cities unto the Levites according to his inheritance, by which he inherited. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye become over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then ye shall appoint you cities to be cities of refuge for you, that the slayer may flee thither, which killeth any persons at unawares, Apologies. Okay. These six cities about cities shall be a refuge for the children of Israel and for the stranger and for the sojourner among them, that every one that killeth any person unawares may flee thither. And if he smite him with an instrument of iron, so that he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. And if he smite him with throwing a stone, wherein he may die, and he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. Or if he smite him with a hand weapon of wood, Wherewith he may die, and he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. The revenger of blood himself shall slay the murderer. When he meet, meeteth him, well, when he meeteth him, he shall slay him. But if he trust him of hatred or hurl at him by laying of weight, that he die, or in, an enmity, or in enmity spite him with his hand, that he die. And that smote him shall surely be put to death, for he is a murderer. The revenge of blood shall slay the murderer when he meeteth him. But if he trust him suddenly without eternity, or have cast upon him anything without laying of weight, or with any stone whereof a man may die, see him not, and cast upon him, then he die. And he was not his enemy, neither sought his harm. Then the congregation shall judge between the slayer and the revenger of blood according to these judgments. And the congregation shall deliver the slayer out of the hand of the revenger of blood. And the congregation shall restore him to the city of his refuge, whether he was fled. And he shall abide in him in the death of the high priest, which was anointed with the holy oil. But if the slayer shall at any time come with him at the border of the city of his refuge, whether he was fled... And the revenger of blood find him without the borders of the city of his revenge, and the revenger of blood kill the slayer, he shall not be guilty of blood, because he should have remained in the city of his refuge until his death of the high priest. But after the death of the high priest, the slayer shall return unto the land of his possession. So these things shall be for a statement of judgment, but until thou out your generations and all the dwellings. Whoso killeth any person, the murderer shall be put to death by the mouth of witnesses, but one witness shall not testify against any person who caused him to die. Moreover, ye shall take no satisfaction for the life of a murderer, which is guilty of death, but he shall be surely put to death. So he basically, not even basically, he was very specific right here, very, very specific to say, but he shall be surely put to death. There was no ifs, ands, or buts. There was no... There was no, oh, we feel sorry for him. Let's, no. You kill, you get put to death. That's quite simple. Very, very specific. It's not to be mistaken, right? Not to be mistaken at all. Don't take any satisfaction in it, but that's what it is saying. Defile not therefore the land which ye shall inhabit, wherein I dwell, for I, the Lord, dwell among the children of Israel. Let's pause right there. Okay, and we're going to finish off Numbers. In chapter 36. And the chief fathers of the families of the children of Gilead, the son of Machir, 
the son of Manasseh, and the families of the sons of Joseph, came near and spake unto Moses, and before the princes, the chief fathers of the children of Israel. And they said, The Lord commanded my Lord to give the land for the inheritance by lot to the children of Israel. And my Lord was commanded by the Lord to give the inheritance. of Zelophad or brother into his daughters. And if they be married to any of the children of the other tribes of the children of Israel, then there shall be their inheritance be taken from the inheritance of our fathers and shall be put out the inheritance of the tribes whereunto they receive. So shall it be taken from the lot of our inheritance. And when the jubile of the children of Israel shall be, then their inheritance be put into the inheritance of the tribe whereunto they received. So shall their inheritance be taken away from the inheritance of the tribe of our fathers. And Moses commanded the children of Israel, according to the word of the Lord, saying, The tribe of the sons of Joseph hath said well. This is the thing which the Lord doth command concerning the daughters of Zelophehad, saying, Let them marry to whom they think best. Only to the family of the tribe of their fathers shall they marry. So shall not the inheritance of the children of Israel remove from the tribe to tribe. For every one of the children of Israel shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. And every daughter that possesseth an inheritance of any tribe of the children of Israel shall be wife unto one of the family of the tribe of her fathers, unto the children of Israel may enjoy every man the inheritance of his fathers. Neither shall the inheritance remove from one tribe to another. But every one of the tribe of children of Israel shall keep himself to his own inheritance. And as the Lord commanded Moses, so did the daughters of Zelophehad, for Mahla, Terzah, and Hoglah, and Micah, and Noah, and the daughters of Zelophehad were married unto their father's brother's sons. And they were married unto the families of the sons of Manas, 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 Man, Manasseh, the son of Joseph. And their inheritance remained to the tribe of the family of their father. These are the commandments and the judgments which the Lord commanded by the hand of Joseph unto the children of Israel in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that does finish off numbers. And so we've gotten to, we've taken quite the journey up to this part where numbers has taken us um on a journey through the wilderness for the most part i mean leviticus uh, you know there's a lot of things done in leviticus but for the most part numbers is that journey it's been set and they we find all of these hiccups that they've had to travel through and now we finally made it to the river jordan they're finally at the river jordan they're sitting across canaan they're going to take over the canaan uh kill every last canaanite because god has commanded because they are so evil that he must kill and every single one of them must die. Not leave one. And that's where we leave off in numbers and that's where we're at. So the fifth book of Mo <clears throat> pardon me, the fifth book of Moses, it's a series of addresses that Moses gives um, to the nation of Israel. There's a couple of sermons. Um, and it's this he's doing this like just before we enter into the promised land. He gives these, he, he kind of addresses them. Um it's kind of like a, maybe you can see it as a coach and a guidance on, on what's going to happen when you get in there. Um, he gives last instructions, uh, you know, what to focus, what to carry. Uh, he gives, try to gives them motivation. Um, they're, So it's motivation. It's 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 a, now everything is kind of led down to this moment, and so this is their final. This is like the final push, and this is the final bit of instructions. And it's okay. We got one more meeting to do right before you know it's practice. It's game. You know it's practice, practice, practice. It's kind of like pre football season. There's months of practice. Maybe usually you know in some cases like two months of practice. And then the season comes, and then you have another couple weeks or a week, and then you start playing football. And now it's game time all of a sudden, and now you've got, you're there. So in a sense, I'm not to say that maybe football is not the right analogy. So 
but that's the kind of the idea. And so, well, hopefully if you, if you've made it this far, uh, we're hitting our next book, right? We're going to be on our fifth book. Now we've gotten to five books and we're going to continue on. So I hope that each and every one of you will continue to join us. Uh, if anybody has followed through on each and every listening, uh, if even just one, uh, I'm glad. All right, we move on. God bless you guys, and we'll see you in the book of Deuteronomy.